Hi, it's Michelle, here to talk about the Periods, Pain and Endometriosis Program, or PEP Talk. We have been loving going into schools all over Australia and running PEP Talk because we are so passionate about people understanding what is going on inside their bodies and what is happening for a friend or a family member. Today we're going to talk about periods before we chat more about pelvic pain in person in an upcoming session at your school. So let's start off with what is a period? A period, or sometimes called a menstrual period, is bleeding from the uterus and vagina that happens around once a month at the beginning of the menstrual cycle. Each month, the uterus, or womb, prepares itself for a possible pregnancy. The lining of the uterus thickens during the month, ready to support an egg. If pregnancy does not happen that month, then the lining of the uterus sheds and the bleeding starts. After a few days, the bleeding stops because the lining of the uterus stops shedding and starts to thicken again. The bleeding that occurs each month is called a period and the process of bleeding is called menstruation. It is much easier to understand how a period happens and where it comes from when you understand the organs in the pelvis. So let's take a quick look at the reproductive anatomy. Starting with the internal anatomy, so what is inside the body. We have the uterus in the middle and the lining inside the uterus, which is called the endometrium. It is the lining that sheds and bleeds at the start of each cycle. We have the cervix at the bottom of the uterus, which acts as a stopper, not allowing things from the vagina up into the uterus. And we have the vagina at the bottom, which is where the blood flows out. The ovaries, one on each side, which makes an egg each month. And there is the fallopian tubes, which joins the uterus to the ovaries. And the egg travels down one of these each month. In the fallopian tubes is where the egg and sperm can get together in people who are becoming pregnant. But there is a lot more to a person's pelvis than the things that are on the inside. We also have the organs on the outside. So let's move to the external anatomy, what can be seen on the outside of the body. The area between the legs is called the vulva. So remember the inside is the vagina and the outside is the vulva. There are three openings in the vulva. The top hole is the urethra, where urine comes out of. The one in the middle is the vagina, where the blood from a period comes out. And the one at the back is the anus, where feces or poo comes out. The clitoris is at the front, above the urethra, under a hood of skin. The flaps of skin on the sides are called the labia. The thicker one on the outside is called the labia majora. The thin flaps further in are called the labia minora. Majora just means big and minora means small. Labia come in all shapes and sizes and all people grow hair on the vulva. That's completely normal. Sometimes one side is larger than the other side and that's completely normal too. Sometimes we see airbrushed or photoshopped vulvas on social media, but that does not reflect the glorious diversity of vulvas that people have. So now that we have learned about the internal and external organs, let's talk about why does a period happen? Well, the uterus is where the blood comes from, and that's because the lining in the uterus thickens up during the month and sheds away but it is the ovary that controls when someone has a period. The ovary makes two hormones that tell the uterus when to bleed, estrogen and progesterone. Both hormones affect the lining of the uterus. Estrogen is the main female hormone. It affects every cell in the body. It also thickens up the lining of the uterus during the month. The number of days between the first day of one period and the first day of the next period is often around 28 days, but can be anywhere between 21 to 35 days. Two weeks before a period starts, the ovary releases an egg. This is called ovulation. The time around ovulation is the most fertile time of the month for people who want to become pregnant. 
If someone has a 28 day menstrual cycle, then ovulation will be around the middle of the month, which is day 14. If someone has a longer menstrual cycle, then ovulation will be a bit later in the month. If you have a shorter menstrual cycle, then ovulation will be a bit earlier in the month. Menstrual cycles can also change in length from month to month. After ovulation, the cells that were around the egg become active and make the second female hormone, which is progesterone. Progesterone prepares the lining of the uterus for a period. Two weeks after ovulation, the ovary stops making progesterone. This is the signal for the lining of the uterus to start shedding and the bleeding to start. It is common for people to have some pain on the first one to two days of their period. If someone is pregnant, the ovary keeps on making progesterone and the period doesn't start. If they aren't pregnant, then they don't need the thick lining of the uterus. The lining of the uterus sheds, the bleeding starts, and the uterus prepares for next month's ovulation. So the menstrual bleed or period is the body shedding the inner layer of the endometrium that is no longer needed. Did you know that on average, people assigned female at birth have more than 400 periods in their lifetime? That's a lot of periods. And the average person will have their first period between the ages of 10 and 14. Periods will continue regularly, usually monthly, until around age 50 when menopause begins. How much you bleed varies between different people. The typical period lasts four to seven days and it is normal to lose up to 80 mil of blood with each period. That's around four tablespoons or 16 fully soaked regular pads. We've talked about the physical aspects of a period, the anatomy, how much someone might bleed, where it comes from, and hormones, but there are other ways a cycle can affect people. It can also affect the way someone feels. So let's go back to those hormones we spoke about earlier. People that have periods might have noticed that they feel different at different stages in their cycle. Sometimes this is just the things happening in their life, but sometimes it is due to the changes in hormone levels. These are called the phases of the menstrual cycle. Let's start off with the menstrual phase. This is a time when someone bleeds, which usually lasts four to seven days. It's common to have some pain on the first day or two of the period, but most people feel pretty normal after that. We talk more about what to do if someone has pain on more than one to two days in our Pep Talk Schools program. During this phase, hormones are quite low and people may feel more tired, fatigued, slow and introverted. Then we move into the follicular phase, which starts after the period bleed ends and lasts until ovulation. This is the time in the first half of the cycle when an egg is developing in the ovary. People say they feel more positive, relaxed and busy during this phase due to the increase in estrogen as well as feeling more energetic and stronger. The discharge on someone's underwear also changes throughout the menstrual cycle. And in this phase, it is usually described as sticky, white, creamy, or lotiony. Discharge is really normal and often a sign of a healthy vagina. Then we come to ovulation. This is the time when the egg is released from the ovary and some people notice when they are actually ovulating and can feel a twinge on one side one month and then on the other the next month. It sometimes means pain for a few hours for some people. And this happens around the middle of the menstrual cycle, approximately day 14. At ovulation, we have a peak of estrogen 
and this means some people may feel increased energy, improved mood and confidence at this phase. And they might feel like socialising more and being around their friends and having fun. The vaginal discharge is more eggy, wet, slippery, clear and stretchy around ovulation. Once we pass the oestrogen peak, we come to the luteal phase. In the luteal phase, this is the time after ovulation, which leads up to menstruation. Usually this lasts around 12 to 16 days. This is the time when the hormone progesterone begins to increase and people tend to feel more relaxed, stable and slower in this phase. After ovulation, the amount of vaginal discharge decreases quickly and it tends to be sticky or tacky or just dry and absent. The day before a period is a time when hormone levels drop quite rapidly and is a time when it's easy to get grumpy with those around you and sometimes say unkind things that you might not mean or regret later. This leads us back to menstruation and the cycle begins again. While people assigned female at birth have around a 28 day cycle with fluctuations of hormones throughout the month, people assigned male at birth have a one day cycle where their testosterone levels are highest in the morning and lowest in the night. So people with a period usually feel different on different days throughout the month due to hormonal changes, but people with a penis usually feel similar on most days due to their one day cycle. Tracking the menstrual cycle can be an easy, helpful thing people can use to keep track of their phases. Most apps are free and you can input the information. People can put in their period, what their pain, mood and skin is like throughout the cycle. If somebody does need to see a doctor, all this information is at their fingertips so they can pull it up and show them their cycle data. Your doctor will thank you for knowing this information. Tracking can help people feel more in tune with their body and their cycle. Periods are a normal part of life but everyone's experience of periods is different. One of the things to look out for is bad period pain, the sort of pain that stops people doing the things that they want to do. Now that you understand the basics about periods, watch out for pep talk at your school soon. We are coming to your school in the next few weeks to talk in more detail about period pain, pelvic pain and endometriosis. See you soon.